Welcome to Indiana University. My name is Allie and I'm a senior here at IU. I'm from Edwardsville, Illinois, which is kind of near St. Louis, and I'm majoring in marketing and minoring in fashion design, and I'm super excited to be leading you around IU today. So currently we are standing outside the Indiana Memorial Reunion, more commonly just referred to as the IMU. This is our student union here on campus. It's actually one of the largest student unions in the country because there are so many things inside of it for students to take advantage of. Inside, there's a bowling alley, a billiards room, a movie theater, places for students to study slash nap, the IMU bookstore, a hotel, so student parents, you can stay right on campus if you wanted to come visit your students, as well as lots of dining options for students. These are currently going under a $10 million renovation, so lots of things are being updated here in the IMU, so students have great access to different food and amazing things. So if you want to come take a look, we're actually going to walk through inside, so follow me. Hopefully you got to see some of those amazing things in the IMU. We had a great little walk through and now we're kind of on the other side of the building. What we're standing in front of, this big tall tower, is the Student Activities Building. So this is the office space for over 750 different student organizations here on IU's campus. Those range from a whole variety of activities, including Greek life, student government, newspapers, all the way to things like the Quidditch team and our Sweet Potato Club, which meets to talk about sweet potato recipes and make anti-yam propaganda. So you know, if you're into that, that's a club for you. Um, we have two student activity fairs that happen throughout the year, one in the fall and then one in the spring at each semester, to be able to walk through um, all of the clubs here on IU's campus and find one that interests you. If you don't find an organization that is interesting to you, you can always start your own. Um, all it takes is a couple friends and a faculty advisor and you're on your way to having your own organization. I actually did help to start an organization here on IU's campus called Royal Encounters, which takes IU students dressed up as princesses and superheroes to Riley's Children's Hospital and organizations like it to hang out with the kids and have a little bit of joy with them. Also been involved in Greek life, which for me was just a great way to make IU feel a little bit smaller and get connected with some women who have the same values and interests as I do, as well as that I've been involved with Alternative Breaks Program, which is an organization that sends IU students on service learning trips inside and outside of the country um, to kind of provide service to different areas. So if there's something you're interested in that maybe doesn't completely align with your major, you can pursue that passion through a student organization and make your IU experience your own. Alright, so we've moved on to our old crescent part of campus. Uh, this is the oldest part and most original area of campus, and it's kind of shaped like a crescent, so we put two and two together and ta-da, old crescent. We're very creative. Um, this is actually my personal favorite area of campus. I just love walking around here when it's the spring and the fall and everything is alive and beautiful. Just a great place to kind of walk around. There's also a lot of interesting buildings around this area, um, so I'm going to let you know a little bit about each one. The Rosewell House is in this area, which is a romantic spot here on IU's campus. It is said that you, if you kiss your significant other underneath Rosewell House for the 12 strokes of midnight it means you'll be together forever. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. Um, I don't have any kind of experience with it, but it is still a very romantic spot here on IU's campus and you'll see a lot of wedding proposals still happening there as well as wedding ceremonies. All of the brick paths in this area um, lead down towards our sample gates, um, which is a kind of an iconic image of IU's campus. If you've ever Googled a picture of IU or we've ever sent you any kind of promotional material ever, it's usually a picture of sample gates. It's just a really beautiful spot I'm um, in a great place to kind of represent IU. But just beyond Sample Gates is the heart of Bloomington itself. Um, so IU is located in a true college town. There's amazing things to do right off campus that students have access to. One of those things is amazing food. We have a whole street dedicated to ethnic food. So if you're in the mood for Thai, Vietnamese, Turkish, Armenian, you name it, you can go to 4th Street and grab something to eat. There's awesome boutique shopping, great fun events and affairs that happen during the weekends, including our Bloomington Farmer's Market, which happens in the fall on Saturdays. Super fun to go walk around um, with a couple friends, have a nice kind of Saturday afternoon adventure. There's amazing things to do, and I really appreciate having Bloomington um, around me, especially as an upperclassman. I get to kind of enjoy Bloomington off campus and have amazing things to do um, when I'm not spending my time here on IU's campus, so great things. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about in this area is the statue that I am standing next to. Um, so this is the statue of Herman B. Wells. He was a president here at IU, and he's a very beloved president. Um, he was integral in desegregating IU, as well as the community of Bloomington, and just really making IU what it is known as today. So we have a lot of respect and love for Herman B. Wells. So in his passing, we built this statue to honor him. 
You may notice that his hand is a little bit more golden than the rest of his body, and it kind of looks like it's out in a handshake. Um, so it has become a tradition to shake Herman B. Wells' hand for good luck. So when you're able to come to campus, parents, if you shake his hand, your student is guaranteed to graduate within the four years. And students, if you shake his hand, you're guaranteed to get an A on whatever exam you have coming up. I'll attest to this a little bit. My parents did shake his hand when we came on a campus tour. Um, and as long as everything goes smoothly this semester, I should graduate on time. And I did shake his hand before all of my freshman year finals and got A's on all of those finals. So whether that was me studying hard or Herman intervening for me, I try to get, get some good luck down here whenever I can. So thanks, Herman. So we are standing outside of Memorial Hall. It is part of our Wells Quad residential spaces. So as a first year student, you will have to live here on IU's campus, but you'll have your choice of living in three different neighborhoods. Um, we break our neighborhoods into different areas of residential hall spaces on campus. Um, our first neighborhood is the Southeast neighborhood, the most Southern point on campus, close to our Southern academic border, as well as the Jacobs School of Music and our School of Education. Our cent central neighborhood, which is the most central place on campus, closest to kind of everything on IU's campus. And then our Northwest neighborhood, which is the most North on campus, closest to our football stadium and the J Kelly School of Business. to our Fine Arts Plaza. This is kind of the center of arts and cultures here at IU. Um, if you were to follow 7th Street, which is the street just behind me, you would begin to hit some of our cultural centers here at IU. The cultural centers are open to all students. You don't have to be a part of that culture to visit them or go to any of their events, but they're there to support diversity and inclusion here on IU's campus. They hold really, really fun events um, and different discussions, so it's a really amazing thing that we have here on IU's campus. I'm also going to just run down and tell you a little bit about the buildings around this area. Um, so the building directly behind me with the angled point and that red sculpture is our Eskenazi Art Museum. The Art Museum here on campus is free for all students. It's open seven days a week with the galleries being closed on Monday. But there's amazing art for students to take advantage of. It just went under a renovation, um, which made it amazing. It reopened and we're really, really happy to have our art museum back online for students here. The next building I'm going to point out is the building with the interesting textured design on the front. This is our Eskenazi School of Art, Architecture and Design. So if you're interested in any art programs, fashion, architecture, design program, this would be kind of a home base for you. Inside are different, different buildings that have uh, student workspaces, student gallery spaces, so a lot of places to kind of support students' artworks here at IU. The next building kind of moving along is our IU Auditorium. And um, this is where different traveling musicals, plays, musicians, speakers will come for the students of IU as well as the community of Bloomington as a whole. Tickets are pretty affordable. They're started around $20 for students. But even if that seems like too much of a price to pay for Broadway level theater, um, you can join the IU Usher program. You'll volunteer your time to help hand out programs and help people find seats. Then at the start of the show, you can sit down and watch it for free. Um, the next building I'm gonna point out, kind of moving along the circle, is our Lily Library. Um, this is more of a museum than a library. It holds a really, really large collection of comic books, which was donated by Michael Uslan, who's the producer of the Batman Dark Knight movie series. He donated those to us as a thank you after kind of going to IU and the success of that movie series. Um, there's also a Gutenberg Bible in there, uh, which so a lot of really amazing things. It is currently closed for renovation, but will be open in 2021. Um, so our students will be able to access all of the amazing things in inside of that Lilly Library. The last thing I'm gonna to touch on while we're in the Fine Arts Plaza is the fountain that I'm standing in front of. This is Showalter Fountain. It is kind of an iconic image of IU's campus. Again, kind of with sample gates, you'll see a lot of pictures of it. There's also a lot of traditions, history, lore that go along with the fountain. One of those traditions being going swimming in it to kind of celebrate being an IU Hoosier. Um, so that's one of the first things that I did when I came here freshman year. Um, the very first night, my roommate and a couple friends and I came down to the fountain and jumped in to kind of celebrate being a Hoosier. So when there's water in it and 
the weather's a little bit warmer, you'll see people dipping their toes and kind of celebrating it, and a lot of freshmen jumping in to kind of celebrate being an IU Hoosier. So another great part of our histories and traditions here at IU. So we are standing inside the Hamilton Luger School of Global and International Studies. As being well as being home to our global and international programs, it's also home to our over 65 different language programs that you can be a part of here as a student at IU. Um, those include languages that you might be taking now, like French, German, or Spanish, all the way to things like Pasto and Zulu. Um, it's an amazing program, so if there's a language you've always tried to wanted to learn, um, you can use IU's amazing language programs here on campus. Since we're in an academic building, we're also going to take a little bit of time to talk about academics here at IU. While our class sizes average about 30 students, you'll be having classes in large lecture halls and smaller classroom sizes, but there's a lot of academic support here at IU to kind of help you through both of those things. Um, in a large lecture hall, um, a great tip is to start in the first couple rows of the classroom rather than the back couple rows of the classroom, um, so that if you have to ask a question, it's only a couple faces turning around to stare at you rather than a hundred faces turning around to stare at you. Um, professors here at IU hold office hours, um, so they're there waiting in different areas around campus for students to come talk to them and get to know them and kind of help answer questions. It's a great way for you, firstly, to get to know your professor, kind of get some personalized help in those classes. They'll go over quizzes, they'll go over tests, homework, all those kinds of things that you may be struggling, help you kind of figure out where um, you're having those issues. For me, I struggled in accounting, and so going to my professor's office hours and I getting help on those homeworks and those quizzes and questions that I was having really helped me um, not struggle so much my homework and my tests, then I ended up doing really well in the class. It's also great to have that relationship with my professor after the class because when I see her on campus, I can say hey, hello, we get to have a nice little conversation. The professor also might have opportunities for you that you didn't know of, as well as if you're needing a letter of recommendation for different study abroad opportunities or different internships, they can be that letter of rec because they've been helping you and know exactly who you are. So here on IU's campus, we do have a many career centers to kind of help support students academics and leading them into a career. There are 14 career centers here on campus, especially in areas to help students in specific career paths kind of tailor their education into the career that they'd like to have. So all the academics here at IU have a ton of support. There's great ways to kind of make sure your academics are leading into a successful career after college. So we are standing in our Arboretum. This is one of our biggest green spaces here on campus. Originally, this is where our football stadium was. Um, so you can kind of see some old semblances of that throughout the Arboretum. Um, there's an old flagpole as well as an old ticketing, ticketing gate located in here. Um, as well as being home um, to the football stadium, this also used to be the home to our little 500 bike race. Um, this is a bike race that happens every single April um, in two week, over two days, a men's and a women's race. Um, student organizations here in IU's campus create bike teams, they train all year long, and then in April, they'll race each other around an oval track, um, celebrating kind of the little 500. It's meant to mimic the Indy 500, which is a car race happening in May, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Super fun event. Everyone here on IU's campus gets super excited for it. When we moved our, our, our football stadium to where it is today, which is up Fee Lane, kind of on the north part of our campus, there was a big what to do with this space. Faculty really wanted a parking garage because for them, parking's always been a little bit of a hassle. But students said, no, let's build a green space. It will be so much better. Um, and I think you can see who won out on that argument. And I'll say it's a much better use of the space than a parking garage. Um, when the weather's a little bit warmer, you'll see people kind of hanging out in here. The Arboretum is Wi-Fi enabled, so you can work on group projects out here. You'll see people scootering, hammocking, taking naps, walking their dogs, all sorts of amazing things in this Arboretum. So it's a great space for students to kind of hang out in here. I'll try to eat lunch out here whenever the weather is really nice. So we do have a new addition to our Arboretum. Um, it is the Metz Grand Carolyn Bell Tower. It was built as a celebration of IU's bicentennial. Um, so it's a really beautiful building. It has 65 bells in it, making it a Grand Carolyn, which is a very special distinction. Um, and it gets played throughout campus um, throughout the day. So when you come to IU, you'll be able to hear the beautiful bells ringing. There's also a lot of academic buildings around our Arboretum. I'll let you know a little bit about each one. Um, on 10th Street, which is right by our Arboretum, uh, we have our geology building, it rocks. 
um, our psychology building, which has a great psych program, as well as the largest anatomically correct structure of a brain outside of the front door. And at night, it lights up in rainbow colors. We have our graduate side of the Kelly School of Business, as well as the undergraduate side of the Kelly School of Business, Hodge Hall. And we have the School of Public and Environmental Affairs, um, SPIA, all located on 10th Street. Right next to the Arboretum as well is our Wells Library. So this is the main library here on campus. Um, it houses our research books, 24-hour quiet study floors, collaboration spaces to work on group projects, um, tech help, so if your computer fails you, you can get some work, as well as a really great dining hall for students to kind of take advantage of. Um, so those are some of our amazing buildings around this area um, and our great Arboretum that has a beautiful green space. So we are standing outside of our intramural center. This is one of two fitness and intramural centers here on IU's campus. This location and our student recreational center, which is closest to our central neighborhood of dorms. Intramurals are a great way to get involved here on IU's campus, um, especially during your first year. It's a great way to have some fun with some friends, um, stay active and have a great time kind of playing games and sports. We have two levels to our intramurals, a competitive and a non-competitive level. So you can kind of pick and choose how serious you want to be about the intramurals. These have a whole variety of things, football, soccer, um, this thing called Battleship, where you and a friend sit in a canoe in our pool, and your goal is to sink other people's canoes by dumping water in them. So a whole lots of ways to have fun here on IU's campus. If you are playing a sport now in high school and you want to continue to play that at a similar level, you can join one of IU's club sports teams. These will practice a couple times a week and then kind of join um, different universities' teams by playing in tournaments as well as games here at IU. So it's a great way if you love sports to kind of continue at the same level. We also have amazing D1 varsity athletics here on IU's campus, and the majority of them are free for students to go to. So you can see our amazing soccer team, women's basketball team, a water polo game, all these amazing things for free. The only two that are not free, of course, are our men's uh, football and basketball. Those are ticketed events, um, but students can buy those in a ticket package. So you can buy our basketball and football tickets in a package deal. Um, either you can buy just a home season of football tickets or a season of home football tickets and half a season of basketball tickets. Um, those basketball tickets are assigned through a point system, so by going to our other free events, such as the women's basketball games or our soccer games, and checking in with your student ID, you can get points. The more points you have, the more likely you are to go to those higher level games, as well as having better seats at those games. So more incentive to support all of our amazing student athletes here at IU. Included in your student uh, tuition, there is a student activity fee that gives you access to this intramural center, as well as different fitness centers here on IU's campus to use whenever you'd like to work out. There's also a rotating schedule of fitness classes throughout the week that let you kind of come in whenever you'd like to. These include classes like cardio, hip hop, um, cycling, all of these amazing things. So you can kind of work out at your own like leisure. Um, the School of Public Health, which is attached to this intramural center, also offers really fun one credit classes that students can kind of add on to their schedule to have a little bit fun throughout the day. These include classes like jogging, yoga, ballroom dancing, taekwondo. Um, so you can kind of add something onto your schedule and have a little bit of fun. I'm currently in tap dancing and it's a really fun way to kind of have some exercise in the week and just have a little bit of fun as well. Thank you for joining me today on our I tour of IU. Just to wrap things up, I'm gonna leave you with why I chose to come to IU. So I fell in love with this school the minute I stepped on campus. I fell in love with the beauty of this university, but also all of the amazing opportunities that are available here. I really felt like I could make IU my own. And now as a senior looking back, I cannot imagine having picked a different university. In my time here at IU, I've been able to create as well as be a part of student organizations that are having a lasting impact, not only in Bloomington, but across the world. I've been able to travel across the world through awesome study abroad opportunities and check off amazing places off my travel bucket list, as well as that I'm leaving college with a full-time job waiting for me, and that could not have been gotten without the amazing professors, advisors, and different opportunities IU provides. So I'm so grateful for my time here at IU. I'm very sad that it is coming to an end in a couple months, but you are all about to begin your college adventures, um, and I hope you find a university that you can make your own. I really hope it's here at IU, but if not, um, I hope whatever university you choose is the right fit for you. So thank you for joining me today. Day, I'm here at IU.